Good morning. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is Saturday the 21st. Excuse me. And we're going to start with prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are so very thankful for this weekend that we have for those who don't have to work to have this day to be productive at home or to get the rest that they need to gather strength to carry on next week. We're so very thankful, Father, for the gospel and for the scriptures and for the lessons that they teach us each and every day. We ask thee that thou would please bless um, those who are struggling right now, that they may look towards thee and find the strength in thee and thy love and guidance. I ask thee to please watch over my family, bless them as they travel, please keep them safe, bless that they will get to their destination in safety, and that they can arrive happy. Please bless the missionaries and my YouTube friends. I'm so very grateful for each and every one of them, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, so my family left for Washington at 4.30 this morning. I got up at 3, because they did it. I didn't want them to leave without me saying goodbye, so I heard some noise, and so I got up at 3, and it was just my sister who was up showering and packing the truck and all that stuff and and it took them an hour and a half to get up and go so they left at 4 30 and after they left i went back to bed and it was so difficult to fall back asleep it was so hard so i'm kind of surprised that i woke up at 7 30 honestly okay but let's do our daily reflection on the book of mormon they're going to be gone for a week a whole week. I'm going to be by myself. All right. See that you are merciful unto your brethren. Deal justly, judge righteously, and do good continually. And if ye do all these things, ye shall have good rewarded unto you again. For that which ye do send out shall return unto you. Alma 41 verses 14 through 15. The ultimate golden rule is that we should treat others the way we want our eternal judge to treat us. If we are merciful, just, and righteous, we shall have mercy and justice rewarded unto us. That is, we will be saved in the kingdom of God. Many times we think of justice as that which is rightfully due the wicked, but justice also comes to the faithful. True disciples of the Lord seek to become even as he is, following in mercy, walking with fairness and integrity, making righteous judgments, always abounding in good works. What doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God? That which, he, that which we send out will come back to us, whether blessing or punishment, May we walk in mercy and goodness and receive the reward of righteousness. Oh. Okay. Okay. Today is 3rd Nephi, chapter 6. And heaven's sakes. For goodness sakes. These people. As frustrated as I am with them, I'm sure the Lord is just as frustrated with, say, me or the world today or them. Goodness sakes. Okay? Okay? Here's... So, they beat the Gadianton robbers. They've been gathered to Zarahemla. They've brought all their provisions. And they've defeated and everything's fine now. So, they're going to go back to their own lands. They're going to go back to their homes that they've abandoned. And they're going to carry on with life. Well, they do that. Everything's grand. They haven't eaten all their provisions. So they're able to sustain themselves while they're building back up their farms. So on and so forth. And what do you think happens? What do you think happens? Pride. Vanity. Dissensions. Classes. 
persecutions, killing of the prophets. Oh, that's a mosquito. <clears throat> Come here. It's going to eat me. Oh, geez. It's going to bite me. Okay. They learn nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Goodness gracious. Okay. The Nephites prosper. Pride, wealth, and class distinctions arise. The church is rent with dissensions. Satan leads people in open rebellion. Many prophets cry repentance and are slain. The murderers conspire to take over the government. Goodness me! We just went through this with the Gadianton robbers. That's why you guys gathered together so that this wouldn't happen. So that you could overcome this. And what do you... They learn nothing. They learn nothing. And as frustrated as I am with them, I'm sure that's how Heavenly Father feels towards me as well, probably. She learns nothing. She learns nothing. Oh, you're going to go to work and be prideful again? Wonderful. Okay. I didn't just teach you that lesson the other day. Okay, great. You're going to go to work and judge people? Oh, great. Okay. I didn't just like speak peace to your mind about the situation. I didn't do that. Nope. Let's, let's just carry on the way it is. Heaven's sakes. I don't learn. Okay. So the verse I chose for my teachable verse is verse five. And now there was nothing in all the land to hinder the people from prospering continually, except they should fall into transgression. And I just wrote my little statement is why do you think the Lord gives you trials? You learn no other way that like though I'm talking about the Nephites and the Lamanites and all them it applies to me the scriptures speak to us that it applies to me why do you think you have trials Haley why do you think you're having you're struggling so much with training these people at work because you learn in no other way if life was easy breezy and you were blessed and everything was prosperous and happy you wouldn't learn a thing Trials are a key in our learning. So I need to remember that when there's like a big trial. All right, let's get into our commentary. Okay. There was nothing in all the land to hinder the people except they should fall into transgression. Mormon, no stranger to the shifting patterns and cycles of behavior displayed in the records of the people over the generations, inserts, inserts a point of wisdom into his account that no barrier to continuing prosperity exists except for transgression. He writes at a time well after the Nephite nation has passed through generations of righteousness following the ministry of the Savior and now face certain extinction because of wickedness. Mormon is therefore an authority on the relationship between righteousness and prosperity on the one hand, and apostasy and destruction on the other. After the great victory over the forces of evil, the Nephites return to their own places of re residence throughout the land and enjoy an abundance of prosperity. This is when they come face to face with their nemesis. And now there was nothing in all the land to hinder the people from prospering continually, except they should fall into transgression. I thought I heard the mosquito buzz in my head. Okay. Um... Oh. We've got a quote here from Jeffrey. Some were lifted up unto pride. On the slippery slope of wealth and pride, the people quickly lapse into forgetfulness and neglect their covenant obligations. Save it, save for a few righteous and stalwart Lamanites, the people slip into gross inequality and begin to sin willfully against the light of the gospel. Elder Dallin H. Oaks has confirmed the Book of Mormon identifies the love of riches and the pride it engenders as the cause of the spiritual and temporal downfall of the people of God. 
commenting on the transitional cycle from good to evil, evil Elder Jeffrey, L. Ho Jeffrey R. Holland has said, that kind of faithfulness brought prosperity so that so great that nothing in all the land could hinder the people from prospering continually except they should fall into transgression. But fall into transgression they did. As a result of those two challenges, they were forever and dis they were forever the destruction. As a result of those two challenges that were forever the destruction of the Nephite righteous pride and riches. In a short time, great inequality developed in the Nephite church, insomuch that it began to be broken up, yea, insomuch that in the thirtieth year the church was broken up in all the land, save it were among a few of the Lamanites who were converted unto the true faith, and they would not depart from it. Ay, ay, ay. The Perils of Pride and Prosperity the warning has been given by prophets and wise thinkers over the ages about the single-hearted obsession with material wealth, the riches at the expense of a living God, and riches at the expense of living the gospel. Let us become aware of the pitfalls of prosperity and guard against an allegiance to worldly abundance without regard for covenant honor. Here are a few examples of counsel against pride and worldliness. But before you seek riches, seek for the kingdom of God. That's Jacob 2.18. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Jeremiah 9.23. There's a lot. Hmm. Not only are emergencies, accidents, accidents, sicknesses, diseases, discouragements, disappointments, reverses, failures, and temptations, the tests for which we prepare, but there are also things that we might not consider in, normal, in the normal line of a test. One of these is prosperity. Sometimes prosperity makes it harder to remain spiritual. Sometimes the luxury of a fishing boat makes us break the Sabbath. Sometimes a condominium at the resort keeps us from holding positions or filling positions properly in our home ward. Prosperity is a test. Can we handle wealth and remain spiritual? And that was Elder Robert E. Wells. Let's do concluding thoughts. Not long after the extraordinary signs of the Savior's birth, the people are beset with assault after assault from the forces of evil. They learn to meet the enemy in the strength of the Lord. Nevertheless, in the space of not many years, they are carried down on a slippery slope of worldly pride and find themselves, with few exceptions, in a state of spiritual squalor, having rejected the prophets of God. Thus we see that the words of the Lord's prophets will all be fulfilled. Those who are faithful will be vindicated and validated in times to come. In addition, we learn again that iniquity will spare us from will separate us from God and his light and put us within the power of the devil if we do not repent. We are counseled to be wise and learn from those of the past. Moreover, the Lord once again teaches in these passages the evils of pride and its devastating power to ruin the lives of individuals and families. How surely are we instructed to overcome pride through faith and obedience we can become pure disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why is it? Why is it? We we ask for wealth and prosperity and blessings and and ease and comfort and it's not what's good for us. 
Okay, today is Saturday. It's day 265. Bruce C. Hafen, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. It is both possible and likely that the closer we come to Christ, the more we will be aware of what we yet need to do. He said, If men will come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. If they humble themselves before me, then I will make weak things become strong unto them. If so, we so so if we are becoming more aware of our weaknesses, that doesn't mean we are drifting away from him. It may well mean that we are drawing closer. Like a good coach, a good tutor will always help his students see and correct their mistakes. When we understand that, correction is motivation, not discouraging. For because of the atonement, we can learn from our mistakes without being condemned by them. The paradox of this divine tutorial is that the Lord will not only correct us, but may also lead us into some forms of personal affliction. Because Elder Maxwell was such a faithful student of discipleship, I draw again from his words. If we are serious about our discipleship, Jesus will eventually request each of us to do those very things which are the most difficult for us to do. Thus, Sometimes the best people have the worst experiences because they are the most ready to learn. <sighs> okay, taking this and putting it with our Book of Mormon study. That's a little, <laughs> what's the proper word? proper word is the proper word is I don't know it's scary but the two thoughts together with you don't learn without trials you don't learn without temptations you don't learn without afflictions you can't become more Christ-like without them and that if you want to become Christ-like, if you want to be the best person that he knows you can be, if you want to become a god or goddess, if you want to be a joint heir with Christ, you have to go through some of the worst experiences. And you just want to say, no, thank you. I I'm good. I'm good. You're not good. And that's the whole point. Okay. That's all for today. It's September 21st. That was 3rd Nephi chapter 6. And tomorrow we round out with 3rd Nephi chapter 7. Which also, I remembered as I was going back to sleep this morning that I teach the lesson tomorrow. Have I planned it? No. Do I have one question? No. This is going to be fun. All right, let's end it with a read it. Do it. Third Nephi chapter six, verse 20. Some people are stirred up in iniquity and puffed up with pride. Others are inspired from heaven and sent forth to preach and testify boldly. Be inspired. All right, let's send it off with a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for this study time that we've had. I'm so very thankful for the my YouTube friends who dedicate a portion of their day to watch me and my study. I'm so very thankful for all of the positive and kind messages that they send me and for the friendships we have developed. I'm so very thankful for each one of them and their support and kindness towards me. I'm grateful for the lessons that have been shared today, for the spirit that has spoken to me, and for the understanding that my trials are necessary. That if I want to be closer to Thee, if I want to be like Thee, I have to walk through affliction. Please bless me with a humble heart when those afflictions do come that I can't be ready for them. Oh, please bless my, my heart and my strength, please. Goodness, I need it. If you're gonna if you're gonna give me trials and afflictions, please bless me with strength. 
please be with my family as they travel. Please keep them safe. I, I love them so much. Please keep them safe. And please be with Hannah and the missionaries. Watch over and bless them and strengthen them. I love thee, Father, so very much. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.